um, Chairman Mark Hamilton. And before we get started, why don't we uh, do as we always do and uh, say a, a word of prayer, please. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, this afternoon, excuse me, uh, came early this morning, and as we move into the day, we just uh, ask that you direct us and guide us, and that we know you're there, but we ask that we seek your presence, and as we make decisions that affect uh, all Georgians, Lord, just be with us, be with our families, our businesses, as we're away doing the people's business. We ask all these things in Christ's name, amen. All right, we're going to get this meeting started, and uh, I'm going to turn it over to um, Representative Nimmer to uh, be the chair as I'm going to be presenting the bill. So with that, I'll turn it over to Chairman Nimmer. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Hamilton. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen of the committee and guests in the room, uh, I'm going to recognize Chairman Hamilton to present House Bill 714. Uh, for clarification, let's review the LC number. We're working off of LC 362485ERS. Is that correct in everybody's folder? That's correct. Okay, Chairman Hamilton. Thank you, Chairman Nimmer. I appreciate that. Um, the reason we've taken a while to get from the when I presented the bill a while back into today is first I want to commend several uh, people that may or may not be in the audience today. They came to me and uh, basically encouraged me to look at the effective date. Um, and so after much prayer, after much uh, talking with uh, people within the industry, talking to a number of other uh, people, it made a lot of sense that uh, although this bill is, is intended to the businesses that are uh, abusing our current program, I know that it does have an impact on the hardworking men, men and women uh, in this state. And so uh, I agreed to change the effective date from July 1st of 2014 uh, 2014 to January 1st of 2015. So if you'll turn to the last page on page three, you'll see that the effective date has been changed to January 1st. And say, so, well, what does that do? Well, first of all, what it does, it says uh, rather than have an effective date that in the middle of the summer, this coming summer, we're just going to leave things the way that they are during the summertime. We also know that this potentially affects people during the Christmas holidays. And so he said this at least gets them started through the Christmas holidays. And so it includes most of the provisions until next summer. I mean, there, there might be other days here or there, but it really puts it off until next summer. And my intention of that is that versus having only three months approximately for the companies as well as the people to adjust to this, uh, and when I say adjust to, uh, it might be finding additional income, it might be finding different jobs, it might be preparing uh, other things uh, to do that. And from a company standpoint, you know, my intention and hope is that the companies that are uh, involved in this will see that we're taking, in, in, in part of the bill, we're taking away that loophole that they have enjoyed and that they will recognize that um, they really need to adjust their pay structure. They really need to take, instead of using the backs of other businesses as part of their compensation, my hope is that the free market takes place, uh, takes precedence here, and they realize that they've got to, as they renegotiate those contracts, they build in a higher wage rate. That's really my hope and intention in doing that. I also think that, uh, and I encourage uh, Representative Bryant, it's not here, uh, but he and I talked, and, and I really think this is, uh, puts the pressure on in the local communities to have our respective Board of Education members, our school superintendents and stuff, to look at, at the unintended consequences that may have potentially been because of the decisions that, uh, that they made. And I hope that all of you will, will, as necessary, go to your respective schools and school systems and ensure that, the, that they are handling things correctly. 
while looking at that, we did a very thorough review of the bill just to make sure that we dotted every I and crossed every T. And I also want to then bring you to two just grammatical changes that we made uh, beginning on line 52. Now I'm working from an old copy, so let me make sure I give you the right, right one. Um, on line 53, you'll see that we changed it so that it, it's, we, we took out the word a private and put any employer. It was really because the, the code uh, deals with both private employers, so we put any employer. And then down on line 54, um, excuse me, not 54, it's um, 55 on this one. Uh, it did say services to or on behalf of an educational institution. We changed that to uh, to, for, with, or own. And we were told that grammatically that handles, uh, so it, it really was less about who the employer was or who the, in, who the, the group they were working for, and that covers that. And I've been assured by the Department of Labor as well as the uh, Leds Council and the Attorney General's Office that that makes sense to do that. And so with that, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll be happy to entertain any questions that anybody might have on the committee. All right. Thank you, Chairman Hamilton. Uh, ladies and gentlemen of the committee, y'all heard the posture here, and uh, I'll take questions at this time. Or Chairman Hamilton will. I'll recognize you. Uh, number 26. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Chairman Hamilton, thank you. And uh, we had uh, uh, mm -hmm. long conversations about this bill and uh, me uh, bringing an amendment forward uh, to your attention uh, on trying to fix this problem. Uh, and again, I, I uh, thank you for uh, uh, postponing the effective date uh, or until January 15th, but that doesn't really uh, solve the problem. Uh, because uh, again, uh, companies are are been taking advantage of the system. I can, I can, I can, I can, I can feel for the Department of Labor and, and uh, the millions of dollars that we're uh, paying on employment benefits uh, uh, that it can go someplace else uh, to help our working families. Uh, but having this. Uh, uh, bill just just like that and just let it let it let it ride and go to the Senate without this amendment I think it's a disservice to the to the, to the men and women that really are going to be affected uh, uh, by, by this piece of legislation even if we postpone it uh, for January uh, 15 uh, or January uh, 2015 uh, you know we we still have to make sure that this uh, employers uh, either do two things uh, 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 either they they can come back and offer a uh, 12 month contract uh, to the employee, so we won't have that that gap of unemployment. Or uh, as as the, as the amendment that I've suggested uh, to you to increase uh, to the employers uh, $1,500 uh, added to the uh, 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 unemployment uh, uh, piece of it, so you know the Department of Labor then will will have a kind of a balance sheet. Uh, so again. Uh, you know, I'm, thank you for for for, for not uh, enforcing this until next year. But actually, you know, uh, over 65 of over 60,000 uh, uh, people are going to be hurt. And in fact, we have uh, several of those folks that are going to be uh, impact impact directly uh, here in the room and. And, and they're waiting for us to do them service and, and, and for us to do uh, uh, to provide something that they can go back home today and say, well, you know, at least I'm in, in, I'm in East and, and, and let's try to fix this. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. And I'm not sure if there's a question in there, but 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 uh, let, let, let me let me just address some of the things that in, in first of all, I think I told you on the floor the other day, I appreciated the way that you approached this and what you were trying to do. Um, but one of the reasons that we postponed it to January the 1st is not only to give the relaxation until that point, but also I think I said that if we find out that we need to make further adjustments, because what I have since I've known but really learned that any time you start messing with the 
the code in the Department of Labor, you not only have the, the, the Georgia Department of Labor, but you have the Federal Department of Labor. And quite honestly, I don't want, I don't think it's prudent of us to make an amendment to our current unemployment uh, numbers, uh, the $1,500 as you recommended. I said I thought that was a good way to look at that, but I, I don't think we've done even come close to the vetting process of that. And I think I also offered that if, if that's something we want to look at, I'll be happy to participate in that, but I would really prefer to move forward with this bill so we address it and take it at this point. Again, it's not going to affect anybody until January. That gives us a lot of other time and also you know, there's an old event that comes up every year. It's called Session, and it'll come up next January. And if there's something else that we need to look at at that time, then, then I'll be the first to say let's look at it. So uh, that's my position on that. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Uh, Representative number 17. You. Mr. Chairman, um, you know, I, I, by sitting here, you know, I've always said that, that to, to be compassionate about where you are. And what I want to do is, is, is say, Back when the snowstorm, it wasn't a snowstorm, but on a, when we had our first hearing, it wasn't a really a lot of public input. Well, I mean, I guess there were reasons for not having a lot of public input. Uh, my only concern is is that uh, that we really didn't have, so you know, we we passed that. But what I like to do though is is say that what we've had since then, you know, the snowstorm. You you think about the folks that are that are in the audience right now. Uh, they, you know, you've got folks from First Student, which was bus drivers last week. I just want to say thank you all very much for what you all did last week. And I'm going to get to my question in a minute, but I want to thank you all for what you all did last week. Uh, food and service workers, thank you all. Cafeteria workers, thank you all for what you all did last week, too. I want to, you know, that's, you know, and believe it or not, the school crossing guards were out there, too, you know, making sure that, you know, the, the folks that walk home could go home. So I want to thank you all, too. Now, my only concern that, you know, I don't, you know, there are, you know, there are several other states, and I don't know if we could have probably put together a task force or something to, to study this. I mean, if we have to slow roll it. I do appreciate, I want to be like my colleague, I want to thank you very much for, for slowing it down and giving folks a chance to, to, to at least, you know, get some of the summer in before that. But I, I do think there's got to be a fix. You know, there's got to be a fix. And this right now is just a delay. Uh, and my only concern is is that um, my recommendation would be a task force to look at the other states because you know this we're, we're not you know it's just not a Georgia it's it's you know you're, you're looking at 17 other states that try to come up with some five of them got a little something and uh, they did put it uh, where's my colleague said where they did raise the, raise the UI wages and and you're correct but I guess they really didn't have a problem with the federal government if they you know if other states did it I think we should be able to do a, uh, something of that same nature. Thank you. All right, thank you. I, I, I'd just like to say also that I want to make sure that, I, and I heard many of those stories of the heroes out there, and I want to uh, applaud all those also. I also want to turn around and say there was also, you know, the other part of the, uh, the industry that this affects are the daycare centers, those that pre-K workers. And I've heard many stories of many daycare centers remaining open all night housing the kids in those uh, uh, respective areas, too. So I, I think the, the, the good thing about this storm is that it's brought out a lot of heroes that we have in Georgia. Uh, it took me 11 hours to go that 38-mile drive home that night, but I was very fortunate. I didn't have any problems. So I appreciate it. Uh, I'm not in a posture to do that, but I'll take this opportunity to say we're not having a committee dinner in the session, and the reason we're not going to do that because we had one last year that we, we talked about the unemployment, the workers' comp. We're, we, I've already told people we're going to postpone that to the summer. And so I plan on having a working lunch or dinner uh, later this summer. And if people want to do some research and do some things to bring forward, we'll certainly talk about it at that point. And I'd open uh, put that, that opportunity up. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, number 24. That would be me. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, my comment to, to my friend um, to my left about about the reason for going forward and the need to go forward. We know we've got a problem. We know that the present status quo is wrong. We know that it's creating uh, a lot of injustice. We also know that uh, the bus drivers and others like them are caught in the middle on this, and that's why I think it was wise for us to give them ample time to get through the summer before we make any corrections. So I, I very much ap appreciate the, 
the delay until January 1st. What I've also learned around here is that study committees only go so far until you, it really it really is best when you go ahead and you make a decision and then and then you start, start taking a look at other things. We by by voting this bill out, by voting this bill through the General Assembly this year, we will we will accept the fact that the status quo is unacceptable and then we can start taking a look at whether or not there should be other changes along the way. Uh, we've actually been having this issue go back and forth for at least two sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, we've recognized it was a problem and it's time for us to go ahead and bite the bullet and at the same time try to be fair and just to the bus drivers who did perform so heroically last week and, and give them more time to make some adjustments in their lifestyle. But it's time for us to, to move forward on this issue and then we can start trying to figure out what else we need to be doing. I think any other questions from the committee? All right. At this time, I'd entertain a motion to do fast. Second. 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 Are you going to take comments from the public about the bill? In the subcommittee. That was in the subcommittee, purpose of the subcommittee. And we, we had. Well, the subcommittee was called the day of when a lot of the workers were working. So they were able to come down. Okay. All right. We're in a posture. I had a motion. I drove four hours from Savannah, Georgia. I'd at least like to be heard from them. Because I got no notice about the subcommittee and can't travel that far in that time frame. Um, just one second. I can appreciate, just one second, ma'am. I can appreciate you driving four hours, sir. And on behalf of the committee, I'll personally apologize that there was not ample time and everybody's scheduled to get here. But we heard from more than 20 people on the day of subcommittee. Here we did. We sure did. I had a list. We had 22, I believe. Wasn't that correct? 22 people gave testimony on the day of subcommittee. We heard them through. It was split down the middle, those for and those against. The purpose of this meeting today is to call a vote. Okay? Now I have a motion and I have a second. I understand that. Go ahead, Representative. Uh, Mr. Chair, I, I saw in the notice out at the door that we have the room until 3 p.m. when the other committee comes in. I'm not intending to be here uh, past 3 o'clock because they have to set up. So we still have, you know, plenty of time. I, I suggest this is workers that were really, truly directly affected. And, you know, if we can take 10, 15 minutes of, of testimony, I will, I will sure appreciate it. I understand, Representative, and with all due respect, I, I would love to hear from them as well. They're overlapping meetings today. You know the process. Everybody in this room has other meetings they need to get to. Mm -hmm. And so at this time, I've got a motion on the floor. I've got a second. Those in favor of passing HB 714-LC-36-2485-ERS. ERS. Signify by raising your right hand. Okay. Those opposed, like sign. Okay, the bill passes out of full committee with a vote of six to three. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned.